Hey everyone, do you see that big pile of parts behind me on my desk? I need those because I'm building a Raspberry Pi cluster. And as a first step, I decided to go with the power source. Now, obviously I don't want to have a bunch of uh, different uh, phone chargers or stuff like that lying around on my desk or a rack or something like that because there's just an awful lot of cabling and need a lot of uh, space to plug those in. So I wanted to go with something more compact. But uh, all the solutions I've seen on the internet were either expensive or inconvenient. So I decided to come up with my own solution. And uh, yeah, in this video, I will show what I've done for uh, uh, having a stable and um, actually useful, convenient power source uh, for the Raspberry Pi cluster. So let's go and see it. Okay, here's the general idea. So you will need one power supply that is large enough to supply um, enough amps for your Raspberry Pi cluster. Or actually, if your cluster is large enough, then you will need more of these power supplies. But still, not an individual power supply for all of the pies. But then what? Then you will need this. So this is uh, what I've made. That's uh, the central point of this uh, whole solution. And as you will see, even if it looks complicated, it's really not. So it's just on a protoboard. Let me just disassemble it. So this part is just basically a shield, uh, which uh, yeah, has four USB ports and then four USB ports here. So it's a total uh, of eight, obviously. And then we have this module, which I've... Uh, haven't uh, soldered in yet, so I can show it in parts. This is just a step-up converter, and uh, then we are left with this part. Now this is basically what I could call something like a power distribution module or something like that. So the idea is that uh, we have these terminals where um, we supply 5 volts uh, coming from a power supply, more than the actual power supply later. And then we have these headers for uh, coolers. We have the USB ports with the shield and on the board itself for powering the actual Raspberry Pis. Again, more on that later. And then we have this step-up converter. So the step-up converter goes here and it's, and it's uh, adjustable. And uh, on that terminal, it can provide power for your networking for example, for a switch. Now this uh, is left uh, as a screwable terminal intentionally because uh, most of the switches work with a power supply connector like this one, but uh, it can vary depending on the model, actual model. So I've left it as an open part of the design. I can just uh, screw those in and there we go. We have a power uh, for the actual switch I'm using. So I can just use this little screw to adjust to the voltage and uh, so all these things will be getting power from here. Now about the actual power supply. So this module can drive um, 8 Raspberry Pis because uh, these USB ports will be used to provide actual power to the Raspberry Pi. And uh, I'm using this solution, not the GPIO, because, um, well, uh, according to the Raspberry Pi documentation, whatever voltage or whatever uh, input you are giving to the GPIO, it is not regulated, not uh, over voltage protected in any way, unlike the USB input. So. I'm just trying to stay on the safe side. So the power supply should be able to provide 8 times 3 amps for, let's say, having 8 Raspberry Pi for 4s or something like that, and of obviously um, 5 watts. So what can we use here? We can use, for example, an older PC power supply, which uh, by default provides regulated 5 volts and 12 volts. In case of 12 volts, 
I could uh, go with a different uh, solution here, like with a step up, uh, step down converter instead of a step up one. But uh, what power supply I'm using is basically an LED power supply, which provides 150 amps and uh, 5 volts. So it means that uh, doing very basic mass, we can safely drive up to 9 or even 10 Raspberry Pis with it. But uh, I'm once again staying on the safe side, so I'm just uh, going with 8. Now let me show you a few examples uh, for such power supplies. They are actually uh, clones of uh, the well-known Meanwell power supplies, which are used for LED strips and yeah, I think mostly, peop mostly people are using these for LED strips. I mean, there are similar power supplies in 3D printers, but those are, I think, 24 watts. Anyway, uh, before a demonstration, quickly revisit the power distribution module and let me tell a few words about uh, its circuit design and then, yeah, it's time to demonstrate the thing. So regarding the general idea and the, the design of this whole thing. So I've been a PC builder for like 10 plus years or even more. And I really like the concept of, of uh, having a motherboard where every component is replaceable and uh, most of them are optional and stuff like that. So I'd, uh, I tried to follow this idea. This is like a tiny motherboard uh, having optional cooler connections, then having optional connection for the step-up module, optional connection for your router, and uh, even the sec this uh, extra shield is optional. So this is what I've tried to do here. And uh, given it's a prototype, I can already see a few points of improvements for the future. Like, uh, for example, having a kind of feedback LED, uh, LED because uh, currently if it's powered, you can't really see it unless uh, you connect something to it. Then uh, I try to find a way to protect it from reverse voltage because uh, with this, uh, you can easily uh, interchange the cables and, and cause problems. I already fried one of these with reverse voltage, unfortunately. Uh, by the way, ignore this. This is not mains voltage. <laughs> I just uh, didn't happen to have the right thickness of cable with the right color. So I had to make compromises. Anyway, so this is coming from the 5 volt uh, power supply and uh, now I will connect it uh, to this power distribution module. Then uh, I will also quickly solder this here and then uh, we will power up this thing and let's see how it works. Okay, so I finished uh, soldering this. Uh, by the way, I just realized that I could simply solder uh, some female pins to the or female sockets to the back of this uh, small PCB, then it would be just something like another shield. But oh well, maybe next time. Then I've uh, added this connector for the switch I will be using with the Raspberry Pi cluster. Then I also connected a cooler, which will be also part of the Raspberry Pi cluster. So also this little thing is just an LED and uh, resistor uh, added inside a USB connector. I use this for polarity testing. So it's just really a cheap disposable solution to check whether everything is wired right before connecting something more uh, expensive to the USB ports. So let's fire it up. Okay. Yeah, you see the problem. So right from the start this was in reverse okay the problem is that these are not real uh, fan connectors so easy to reverse them but i've already ordered the right parts from uh, aliexpress so it will take some time to arrive but then uh, you will you won't be able to reverse connect fortunately these fans are protected against reverse voltage so led is lighted up it means that uh, the USB has correct power and uh, these uh, should be set via this potentiometer to 9.6 volts, which is the required input for this. So let's uh, check it. Okay.
yeah pretty much okay next so connect the switch let's see the LEDs light up on it okay one all of them yeah it's operational and now we connect the Raspberry Pi so here we go this is a Raspberry Pi model 3 we will need micro USB cable here and let's connect it okay the pile it is seems to be seem to be fine and now connect the pie to the switch so let's see if we have networking okay so you can see the LED here light it up means that the network connection is proper and then let's uh, add some LAN connection and there we go so my single node cluster using this power distribution module cooled by this biggest fan is connected to my local area network so it seems to be working okay what next yeah next step is obviously to build an actual cluster because it, this is right now just a bunch of uh, parts uh, thrown together and wired together and uh, also i will have to design and order a proper pcb for these because uh, obviously i don't want to run a bunch of uh, raspberry pis uh, connected to just uh, to this prototype board and yeah also there are those impro improvements i mentioned like the reverse voltage protection and stuff like that so i'm not saying next week follow-up video but uh, soon because uh, for me this is an important project I want to create a lot of Raspberry Pi related videos and uh, yeah for some of them I will definitely need that cluster so stay tuned anyway that's it uh, thanks for watching it hope you liked the video if you haven't subscribed to the channel please consider subscribing and hope to see you next time next week with a new video bye hey thanks for watching this video if you liked it hit like if you want to help my channel and see more of my content, hit subscribe. If you want to check out behind the scenes and want to know more about me, then follow me on social media. You can find the links here. Thank you again and see you next time.